in a basic AnyConnect VPN, all traffic from the VPN client is encrypted and sent to the ASA or FTD, no matter what its destination is. In most cases the VPN client will be disconnected from the local network resources and even your internet will be go through your VPN tunnel. Full tunneling is considered the most secure configuration because it does not enable simultaneous device access to both the internet and the corporate LAN. Split tunneling can work to alleviate these problems since it allows users to send only that interested traffic to VPN tunnel. The rest of traffic such as instant messaging, email, or casual browsing is sent out to the internet via the local LAN with full speed. There is no bandwidth limitation from corporate side. But you can securely connect your corporate resources. Now let's dive in. First we log in to Cisco ASDM. Then we can use startup wizard menu. Now we select VPN wizard to create our AnyConnect connection. The first step is to configure VPN access interface, normally we connect to our VPN concentrator via outside arm. So here I am using outside interface. This is the name if of my interface. Also we need to put a name for our connection profile. In this step, we have to select VPN protocol, if we are using Cisco and eConnect then we can uncheck the IPsec. We also need to have device certificate, if we don't have one, we can select manage button. Here we can add identity certificate, you can either add PKCS12 and private key, or even self-sign certificate. To run Cisco AnyConnect, you must upload here client image, you can upload latest version of AnyConnect. You need to upload web deploy edition of AnyConnect client image. In this step we need to configure authentication method. We have different authentication model, simplest is local, but you can use LDAP and use your active directory as authentication server. For simplicity I select local method. So we need to add a user account and then click next. Now we have to create an address pool for our VPN client. We select new and provide a name for our pool. Then we put IP, address range and of course the subnet mask. In this step we provide DNS and domain name for our VPN clients. This is how they resolved when accessing the internal or external network. Now we click for next step. This step is very important step. Here is NAT exempt part. If NAT translation is enabled on our ASA or Firepower, then we need to exempt our VPN traffic from this translation. So now I will exempt my VPN traffic from being NATed based on my topology. And here is an overview of all the steps, if you feel comfortable with it, click finish and we go for new steps to configure any connect VPN split tunnel. After the completing wizard, we should go to remote access VPN menu, here we have to configure two important sections. Any connect connection profile and group policy. Before going to those steps, we need to make sure that SSL feature is enabled on outside interface. Also please pay attention that by default, for VPN session all access lists will bypass. With this feature, you can connect to the same IP, but using a different URL for accessing different resource. You can make a group listing with a URL and bind into user accounts. Now let's do the connection profile editing. Here, we can see all the configurations we have done in the past wizard. To configure the URL alias, we need to go to the advanced section and select the group alias menu. You can erase or disable connection aliases and create group URLs. Here we provide the URL for connection. The IP address is our ASA or FTD IP address. We can have different URLs for various types of users with different access level to corporate resources. Now we apply the configuration and we'll go to next step which is group policy configuration for split tunneling. Now we are going to group policy menu to configure split tunneling. Select the related policy and hit edit button. In this page, the first move is to select the correct address pool for our policy. We hit on select button and choose our pool and hit assign. For next step we go to advanced menu and select split tunneling. 
There are important options here. If you don't want to send all DNS lookups into your corporate network you can uncheck inherit and select no. Otherwise leave it as it is. To make split tunnel we have to change the policy, uncheck inherit and select tunnel network list below, with this policy only the your customized network list will travel into the tunnel. To select network list you can hit on manage button. Here we can select our interested traffic based on standard access list and extended access list. Only this traffic will go to tunnel. The last step is assign local user account into connection profile. Then hit OK and apply the configuration. Now we are ready to test. Now we open the Cisco and eConnect client and put the URL in connect. In our statistics, we can see the tunnel mode is now split include, and also we can check that our machine IP address is collected from the pool. Now open the root details section. As you can see here the secured route which refer to interested traffic to go through tunnel is only our customized traffic. And now finally we can ping our server behind the VPN tunnel. When we disconnect the tunnel connection the ping will be lost 